The theme of the conference is aptly titled Reset. The bottom line is that we live in a shared world and no one is safe until everyone is safe. But it may take four to five years before we finally see the end of the pandemic and the start of a post-COVID normal. In Singapore, we plan to have all our residents here vaccinated by the third quarter of the year if all goes well. In the positive scenario, this means the vaccine becomes a bit like an annual flu jab. Or perhaps we develop a vaccine that works for all strains. But in the worst case, we end up always a step behind the evolving virus. And we will not be able to catch up in time. Even as we focus on the immediate battle at hand, we must look ahead to the task of resetting for the future. And my hope is for Singapore to emerge as a fairer, greener, and more equal country with a much stronger spirit of solidarity and shared purpose. When my mother, who's been a teacher for many, many years, used to come back from teaching and then she would lament, oh, we have a new minister and he's got this new slogan for the schools. Oh, we've got a new pump set and he's got this new program in mind. <laughs> and, and, and I can understand, you know, it's, things keep changing and they don't feel like they are part of um, the solution, but it's something hoisted on them. So, my own, coming from my background and growing up the way I did, I, I hesitate a bit to say, this is my priority. I think it should be what educators want. And all educators want to uplift every child and ensure that they are able to achieve their full potential. Is there still racism in Singapore today? Yes, of course, there is. Let's acknowledge it. But is the situation today better than it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago? I would say it is too. Is it perfect? No, it's not. So our aim must be to continue working at this, trying to reduce the imperfections, trying to make it better year after year after year. And that includes us re-examining ethnic integration quotas, whether it's self-help groups, None of this should be cast in stone or, or regarded as sacred, cannot be changed. We must do our very best to ensure that identity politics that is divisive and polarizing does never get a chance to take root in Singapore. Some people have said you've had a good crisis being fronting the whole um, effort, I mean, in a, a way. good crisis. In a way, what yes. What does that mean? It's certainly not about deciding by gut, right? I, I don't trust my own gut. So, um, I, I, I have obviously gut reactions to anything that comes up, but in decision-making, you know, in a situation like this, it is not just based on instincts. You've got to look at data, you've got to look at evidence, and we have a whole team of people helping us, experts, scientists, advising us, uh, so we bounce off ideas, we bounce ideas off them very rapidly, constantly almost. The policies first and foremost have to be determined by what's right from a public health point of view. But to some extent, the implementation of the policies do depend on the public acceptance of these measures. And, and that's a judgment. If the compliance rate is very low, then it's not going to be effective.